What's up, everyone? Welcome in. The preseason is behind us. The regular season is coming. I've spread some sage all over the place. And let's talk Celtics basketball with Brian Robb, Evan Valenti. I am Adam Kaufman. Thank you. Welcome in. Happy early holidays. And hopefully you're enjoying a nice restful break before the new year comes around, obviously. How you fellas doing? Hanging in. Excited for some regular season basketball here. Yeah, just a few days away, of course, today, as I mentioned, Sunday, who knows when you're listening to it, maybe it's uh, even later in the week than that at this point, but the games begin on Wednesday, the Celtics first action after an 0-2 preseason that, let's be honest, uh, we know how preseason works, regardless of the sport or team you root for wins losses those don't matter it's flow of the game and indications of how individuals do and trends and things like that that you try and decipher and that actually matter and in this particular case it's hard be rob to get a gauge on this team right now evan and i were talking about this off air and uh you know it's it's nothing you haven't thought about obviously just the fact that hey kemba walker he's hurt He's not going to be ready for the start of the regular season either, but he didn't play in either of these preseason games, neither Tristan Thompson, who was their big free agent acquisition. Uh, Romeo Langford is sideline. That's a guy that down the road could be part of the rotation as well. So it's just, it's, it's hard to really examine where they're at with the regular season coming up. No, no question. And on top of all that, you have a super condensed training camp. Mm -hmm. So that, leaves you just two preseason games to work with with footage um and that opens up so you don't and then with like guy like tristan thompson now you don't see the combinations you'd want to see heading into the regular season so factor that in with obviously uh the team's core i had a very long run during last year's season so they are in a very quick turnaround and from an energy standpoint in the preseason they clearly weren't there yet so how do you evaluate that? How much credit do you give those guys being like, okay, they're going to obviously turn it on when they need to turn it on versus, you know, Gordon Hayward's gone. Kemba Walker's gone. Like the shots are going to be the easy looks are not going to be as easy to come by this year. So balancing all that into play, like, like you guys said, like it's really tough to, to get a great read on where this team is at, but there's no mistake. Like they, they weren't in Brad Stevens isn't happy after the, the preseason and it's hard to blame him. Is there something that you've watched so far that you have seen that you that you can make some you know heads or tails out of that worries you? Just that one big concern going into the season that goes beyond injury? Yeah, I mean, I think the a clear one is what happens when Jason Tam's on the bench um, to the <laughs> offense. <laughs> like, because last year, you know, he the Tatum plus bench unit was very successful. And that meant when that happened, you could pile up three starters together, you know, smart Brown. I mean, smart was coming off the bench half the time, but smart Brown, Hayward Kemba. And then that would be obviously a pretty good unit too. Now two of those guys are not around for the start of the season and, and Kemba and Hayward, obviously. So uh, the, the smart Jalen Brown and other guy minutes have not gone great. And they're not going to go great if those guys aren't hitting shots. So I think that is going to be an issue this year. And you, you have to, I think, the, the coaching staff is going to be doing plenty of mixing and matching to see who can kind of fit around those guys and make those minutes where the team can hold its own for the, whatever the 12 or 15 minutes a game that team is on the bench. But it's um, those are going to be critical because I think, you know, you don't take anything out of a, a preseason game, but um, I think the, the plus minus splits in those two preseason games with Tatum on and off the bench were, were not good. Yeah, I think Tatum was like I, I, Grandy had it. So if you want to fact check me, go ahead. But Tatum on the floor was the only reason why the Celtics were plus anything in any of the two preseason games. So I, I, to echo your sentiment here, uh, B. Rob, it's it's not pretty when Tatum goes to the bench and you look around at this team and you know with no Kemba, where does the relief come? Is it going to be a Jeff Teague? Like and, and Teague, I thought was pretty great. And Adam, you know, our last show was all over the Teague acquisition. He's actually been all over ever since that was uh, official, quote unquote. Um, but if you're relying on Jeff Teague and maybe a little Peyton Pritchard here and there and, and Marcus Smart to get hot at some point, like there's just, there's a little big bit of a concern in terms of what you can produce off the bench, um, you know, when, when your star player goes out. And for me, uh, Brian, you got to look to Jalen Brown and say, hey, like this is, this is your time here. Like this is a time where you need to, to, to be aggressive and to, to hunt your shots and get to the places on the floor where you think you're the most comfortable. And this is, I think, 
an area in which, you know, for Brown, it's a little uncharted waters here, Brian, if, if, if I'm, in a, I'm a little concerned about, although, you know, Brown's been able to be one of the most consistent players for the past couple of years. This is a, a point where Jalen Brown being the offensive focal point is, is going to be needed here. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. Just the margin of error is, is down for him this year. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that can be, it's, it's good. He's going to get more opportunity, which he has shown he deserves based on how he's, he's performed, especially in the, in the postseason um, last year. Um, but at the same time, like defenses are going to be keen in on him more. And so, and he's not going to have, you know, Hayward or Kemba setting him up as much. So that's going to make life tougher for him. And so he, I know there's areas of his game. He needs to, or he said he wants to work on this off season in terms, including like, you know, becoming a better distributor himself, you know, because I think you look at his assist rate, it is not good in his career. That's probably his weakest spot in the offensive end. So there's a lot of growth there. If they want to like, you know, they threw him in the pick and roll and think and have him handling the ball more. And he's gotten a lot better there, but he still has a long way to go on that front. So um, that's definitely, I agree with it. And that's a huge area to watch so far. And um, it's going to, you know, it's not going to make or break the team, but it's going to certainly make or break how the team does on certain nights. Boy, there was some obsession going on on social media watching those games, though, with Jalen Brown's passing as if he had just, you know, turned some <laughs> ridiculous corner there was, a few months ago playing in the bubble to where he's at now. It was just that one pass, the one dump off pass <laughs> to Rob Williams. It was one pass. It was it. And the whole yeah. Internet went nuts. It's like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, we never saw Jalen do that ever before. But like he's going to have to do a lot more of right. that if, if, if they're going to be really successful. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like you need to doing things once in a preseason game. Great. But doing it again and doing it without turning the ball over on the two other possessions, you're running the pick and roll. That's what's going to be the key here. So, I mean, they're gonna have to find that out. It might be a situation where he's just not ready for that. And, you know, you, you, you can feature him in plenty of other ways. Obviously he's very valuable off the ball and, you know, driving to the hoop, but um, you also have to be careful just not to ask too much out of him too, because that's when you get some, you know, too much ISO and then some, some, some ugly shooting nights.